Hi there, this is Helen Tarrant again from Helen. Commercial Property Roadshow. You're here with Helen Tarrant and today I'm actually going to show you how to pick undervalued properties. A lot of people can't see this and this is why I thought I'd do a video because people do miss this stuff and one of the reasons being an expert in this industry is actually about being able to tell the undervalued properties from the non adam undervalued properties and to look at what there is an upside. People often look for the most obvious upsides but if the upsides were obvious everyone would buy it, right? And this is why we're making this video, which I'm going to share with you. So I saw a property recently and I think it's got value and potential and it's not just yield driven. So now the reason I say this is this property is in Fortitude Valley in Brisbane. Now, as you see this video, uh, you're going to see that all the other shops in this complex and there's probably about 30, 40 shops there and about five to six residential buildings all supporting the little court at really really busy i was there on a sunday mid-morning actually sunday afternoon and it was still packed right so all the shops are really upmarket gentrified um they're all sort of your dentist even up market you know like your stores you know, retail stores your branded stores branded eateries you know your upmarket japanese restaurants fine dining um areas like that and and when you, then you see this little convenience shop who hasn't been renovated, been there for five years, just renewed their lease, and it's a little bit of an odd one out of the group, right? And this is where you start thinking, yes, I'm going to buy this property at probably slightly higher than market yield. So if the market yield is around that 5.5% for a property like this with this type of tenant, in an area like this, and you let's say you have a dentist or a really brand name tenant, the yield is probably going to be five or sub fives, especially if they're on a three or five year lease or longer. Now, this is the type of property that I personally like to get for our clients because I'm looking at, okay, so if they buy this property at slightly higher market, let's say heading towards 6%, firstly, they're sitting, you know, almost half a percent above market. Secondly, this is one of those properties you don't really care if the tenant goes bust, right? Wouldn't it be nice to have a property where you don't actually care if the tenant goes bust? Well, this is one of those properties that you literally do not care if the tenant goes bust because a new brand new tenant even paying exactly the same rent on exactly the same rent but refurbished property with like a spa tenant, a hairdresser or, you know, an eatery in there will literally raise the value of your property maybe up to you know close to 20 percent and i think that this property has that potential because it's the odd one out when you see the area you see how well it's gentrified and this is a tenant that is hasn't caught up with the times but if you change the tenant to someone that caught up with the times and totally fits the area all of a sudden the value of your property jumps right now you have the opportunity to get in you get cash flow. If the tenant survives the next five years, which is on their lease, they will. If they've already done five years, they already know their numbers to survive the next five years. If they do, then fine, you sit back, you relax, you take the cash flow and let it go and let the market naturally does its thing. But if it doesn't, it's also hooray for you as well. So you win-win out of both of this. You swap out the tenant with someone that is a really a better tenant that suits the area and the demographics. And then you've added 20% value to the back end right? Yes, there's going to be some vacancies when you swap out the tenant. Yes, you may need to give some rental incentives, but ultimately you're going to be better off in the future, right? And that's where you spot the undervalued properties. And so it's not just the obvious things, it's the things that other people don't tell you. And it is the things that you miss that make it, make these things the, a better buy. And these are the things we look out for for our clients. And these are the things that we pay attention to when we know that the property is going to sustain or go above um, expectation in terms of value right so let's have a look so we're in number hundred a thousand sorry Anne Street and it's really busy here like this is Sunday afternoon it's really busy you can see the amount of traffic that is here um, so it's one of those areas where it's got lots and lots of different shops uh, we've got BWS lots of people coming through still on a Sunday afternoon grilled gelatisserie jut and got one for sale vacant so we've come out of the sushi place here so that was the entrance it's a sushi place so there's Max and Mason 
I do chard rolled in tea. Um, we've got dim sim around the corner, but chemist warehouse. Dim sim's closed for the moment. We've got residence parking for residence back. National designer, Margot McKinnon, Ella Bache. There seem to be three levels of apartment here. Apartments up there. So definitely a complex where most people come. Uh, Hello, Bache. We've got a shop across there, Lodge. We've got Margot Collections, which is, I believe, probably, they seem to be in the middle of doing a fit out at the moment. And McKinnon's Jewelry Store. Fit out. Orthodontist. And tiles, more apartments. Um, Fortitude Valley Vet, Lash Joy, Nail Bar. That is the convenience store over there. So, there's dessert cafes and things. I'm going to walk there soon. I'm going to have a look here. And so, this is the convenience store. It's open at the moment. Dentist next door. They seem to have an ATM. Phone accessories. Busy here. Blotched. And we've got dry cleaners coming through. Let's go and have a look. Do you want an ice cream? Mm. Do you want an ice cream? No. Okay. Want something else? Yeah. What? Yeah. Have a look. Let's have a look. See what else you want? The shop at the front. I think it's just mainly food, Max. It's just mainly food and an ATM there, so mainly food. What did you want to do? You want anything to eat here? Oh, this tick fruit tingles. No, nice. Try twisties, but no cheesels. No ice cream. No, cheese. No, no, nothing cheesels. Make a decision. Peanut butter. You want peanut butter? M&M's So this is the other side You've seen what it looks like on the inside. I took my son in there. We bought some food. We we're on our way to the airport when we came in and dropped in in the afternoon. Now, if the area looks like that on a Sunday afternoon, on a Saturday, Friday, it's really going to boom. And there's plenty of plenty of residential to really support the business there. So I think that it's a destination property, but it's also a market upmarket destination property and sometimes when you're looking for things that give you cash flow but something in the back end this is the perfect combination so again if this is something you're looking for or you're looking for information on commercial property you're looking for ways to improve your commercial property strategy cash flow capital growth or just build a portfolio out reach out to me helentarrant.com unicorn commercial property don't forget my link to my book below order the book and there's heaps of strategies in there reach out to us have a strategy session and let us help you build that commercial property portfolio. Bye for now.